probably the number one question we're getting in the market right now is something along the lines of, is it too late or have I missed my opportunity, right? So for a buyer to say, is it too late to buy because, um, because mortgage rates have gone up. As a matter of fact, we have a social media question here from Ryan right now. What's up, Todd? Golden question, buy a house now or wait? Now, uh, we literally did a team training with our agents here on the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team this week where we discussed this exact question. And we talked about two primary scenarios that home buyers right now should consider. One of them was 90 plus days ago. Let's say, let's say three to four months ago. And one of them is today. So let's compare these two scenarios. So if you're out there listening right now, lean in if you're a home buyer. But if you're a seller, you need to pay attention to this as well because sellers need to have a reasonable understanding of what buyers are thinking. If you have a product to sell, you need to know how to sell that, how to market that to the right buyer. What is a buyer thinking? What are they afraid of? What are they considering? What makes them optimistic and what makes them pessimistic? Okay, so two scenarios for a buyer. Three to four months ago, a buyer was looking at interest rates somewhere around 4%. They were looking at probably one or two, maybe three homes to choose from that fits their criteria. And they were also probably looking at uh, 15 to 20 competing offers for that home, as well as a seller that had zero interest in being negotiable with them, being cooperative with them. Seller, sellers at that point were basically saying, you'll do what I ask for and you'll like it. Or you can go buy something else because I have 19 other offers. So that was the scenario three to four months ago. The scenario today is you might be looking at around 6% interest rate. That's not cool. That's not fun to have to consider a one and a half to 2% higher interest rate. But let's look at every single other item here you're probably looking at four or five or six homes to choose from that fit your criteria, maybe more. So double the opportunity of homes to choose from. You might be up against one to three or four offers. So like one, you know, 20% of the competition you had before, right? Four times less, uh, five times less competition to choose from. Uh, you're also looking at because of that competition, probably needing to be at asking or a little above on a really nice house compared to three to four months ago, forty dollars to $50,000 over asking price. You're also uh, looking at a seller today that would be open to a roof repair or getting that water heater fixed or patching a hole in the wall or getting some electrical work done that wasn't code compliant. Uh, for the buyer. Whereas three to four months ago, again, that seller was telling you to take a hike that they weren't going to fix anything. So here's the comparison. Three to four months ago, rates were great. Everything else was harder. Today, rates are not as great, but everything else is more beneficial to you as a buyer. Simply on purchase price, simply on competitive offer pricing, you might save 30 to 40 to 50 thousand dollars. Where on your monthly payment, because of your higher interest rate now, you might pay two or three or four hundred dollars more. Now, hear me loud and clear: two, three, four hundred dollars more is a lot of money, but it might take you um, eight to ten years to spend the same amount in higher payment that you would have had to spend up front on purchase price or down payment just three to four months ago. So, for the majority of buyers. Today is actually a more favorable setting to buy a home in. That doesn't mean that everybody can do that today or that the higher interest rates haven't priced some people out of a home that they would want or like or feel proud of or one that's even available. But for a lot of people that can afford it, if you and your family and your finances want a home today and you can afford that responsibly, comfortably, then today for a lot of people is actually a better buying environment than three to four months ago. Now, here's an extra thought. The interest rate today is temporary. We don't know how much it may go up. We don't know how much it may go down. But I can tell you that I am personally, I've been doing this for 20 plus years. I am personally very, very confident that rates will come back down. I don't know that they'll come back down to 2.25, but I believe rates will come back down at least into the low to mid fours in the next five years. So even if interest rate is a significant chunk of your consideration, you may only have to carry that five and a half or six or six and a half point interest rate for the next 
uh, three, two, three, four, five years. And for the life of your 15 or 30 year loan, you may have, you know, an overall average of more like four and a half, which would be a really, really powerful um, leverage point to buy a home in a more favorable market, take a hit on interest rate for a few years and then get it back down. Uh, we have another social media question today here from David. Does this current market feel like at all? Does it feel at all like what April, May uh, of 2022 did? A bunch of people on the sidelines um, came rushing back into the market and I'm not able to see that entire question for some reason. Sorry, my uh, screen here is not perfect. But um, no, this market does not feel like um, three to six months ago. You know, we talked about that. Many, many, many people in the industry, and I will raise my hand and admit that I, I had a slight misread on the first quarter of this year. Oh, I'm sorry. He's asking about 2020. He corrected it. Um, does this current market feel at all like April, May of 2020? Um it, do, it feels more like April of 2020 than it feels like April of this year. Um, and, and the reason is there was a tremendous amount of uncertainty. And David, go ahead and confirm if I'm getting your question right, just because I, I, uh, my screen's not showing the whole question. I did see that you updated it to 2020. But um, in April of 2020, we had unbelievable amounts of COVID confusion, right? We had lots of uh, anxiety and uncertainty in the market. People that were bold did really well because obviously they rode, you know, a, a massive ride of rapidly accelerating appreciation, uh, but they had uh, unbelievably low interest rates and and they, at that time still decent inventory to choose from. That's what's happening right now, save for the interest rates. They got good inventory, they have less competition, they have a lower level confidence in the average seller, they have less offers and showings to compete with, and they have an interest rate that is, you know, pushing some others out of the market. So if I'm a buyer, that's what I want. More options, less competition. I would like a lower cost of borrowing, but don't forget a significant portion of our market is still cash buyers and they're making hay in this market. So hopefully that answers the question. Uh, another one coming in. Will a bunch of people on the sidelines now come rushing back in for round two of the craziness? Before producer Mason had a solid contribution there out of the production cockpit over there with his multiple screens and microphones and buttons to push. Um, you know, we're, we're talking state of the market. We're talking about what choices a buyer has. And we're talking about uh, really your questions. A lot of them coming in through social today. Um, you can always ask a question on Facebook. Uh, you can find us on Instagram. I'm not personally quite as active on Instagram, but our, our Todd Germani home selling team page has got some good stuff up on there. But we got a question again from David here. Will a bunch of people on the sidelines now come rushing back in for round two of the craziness? And I, I think, yes, what, we, what we've seen in the last 60 days or so here in the Dallas-Fort Worth market is that sellers have come rushing into the market more so than in the last five years. Um, so we've seen a pretty typical, if you look at the data and sort of the pace and momentum of the data, in some ways we've seen a fairly typical spring where inventory uh, lagged a little bit and then shot up in June. But it shot up relative to where it was before this year, it shot up a lot more than in the past. So let's just say it might, it, it might traditionally go up 20 to 40% in June this year, it more than doubled in lots of areas, right? So you're talking a hundred percent. Now it was so low. You might've had a neighborhood with three houses for sale and it went up to six. You might've had a neighborhood with uh, two houses for sale and it went up to eight. That's a 400% increase in inventory, but it's not it's not like all of a sudden there was 85 houses on the market. We kind of surveyed our team and we'll talk to some of our team in the second half of the show, but we surveyed some of our team and they said their typical buyer in uh, first quarter, early second quarter had, you know, two or three homes to choose from that were meeting their criteria typically. And we typically have slightly pickier, a uh, little bit headier buyers. If that's the kind of person you are, you probably want to reach out to our team. Um, we have a, a slightly sophisticated clientele and we love that. Um, but now they're saying they've got four to six, right? So it's probably doubled from two or three to four to six. That's a big difference if you're that one buyer who has twice as many homes to choose from. But um, as a market, it's not 
blindsiding the market, right? We're seeing a lot of volatility like we did see in spring of 2020, like David's question indicated. Uh, and we're seeing sellers rush in. I think a lot of that is legitimate, uh, not legitimate. It's panic selling, meaning people are worried that the riot is over. And look, they might be right. I don't think we're going to have some hard crash to the end of our run. I think right now we're experiencing some of the volatility like we experienced in spring of 2020. Some people just, a lot of people just don't know what to expect. And so they're making decisions on a much broader spectrum than they were spring of this year, where there was almost blind confidence, just exuberance that prices would keep going up, buyers would keep knocking doors down, and sellers could keep calling their shots. Now we're seeing some sellers that are like, nope, I'm going to still call my shot. But other sellers who are saying, look, things have changed. I need to get out while the getting is good, or I need to get out before I get stuck. Um, we're seeing some buyers that are sitting on the sidelines to, again, to David's question, we are seeing some buyers who are recognizing those two scenarios I presented at the top of the show, where the only thing you had going for you, that's not true. There, you had two things going for you three to six months ago. You had low, low rates and rising prices. So if I buy a house, I can borrow cheap and my, it's going to be worth more tomorrow than it was today. What we have going on today is in, in our market, we still have rising prices in most areas, and but we have higher rates, right? So if I buy it today, it's probably going to be worth more tomorrow. Not a, Maybe not like 10% more tomorrow, but maybe 1% more. And But now I have a lot better scenario to shop in. More homes to look at, less people to compete with, less offers. Uh, sellers are a little bit more reasonable. So again, I'm not going to go over that 27 times on the show today. But if you're a buyer, you probably, most likely, I'd say it's probably like 60% of people, today's actually a better environment to buy a home in than when we had lower rates three months ago. Not true for everybody, but probably 60, 65% of people, if they really look at the true scenario, and they understand that their rate's not permanent. They could refinance later. But the house is, and their options are, and their purchase price is pretty darn fixed. Uh, today's a better option to buy a home than for a lot of people uh, three, three to six months ago, and certainly last year. Now, let's say, let's say I'm uh, wrong or I'm off by a, a little margin, and our market takes a hit on value for a little while. Let's just say we take a hit for 18 months. Values slip a little bit. Most people that are buying a home right now plan to still be in that home in 18 months or 24 months. So I'd be a little more careful if I only intended to be in a home for, you know, a year or less. By all means, reach out to our team, toddtramaniteam.com, and we'll talk you through that. You, maybe you shouldn't buy right now. But for the vast majority of buyers that plan to be in a home long term and are looking for the best deal and the best options, most of those people, most of you are better off buying now than you were three to four months ago with lower interest rates. And for a seller, it's still a great time to sell. But as buyers get priced out of the market and as buyers have questions and concerns and fears, that's gonna have at least a somewhat negative impact on sellers.